Okay, so we're looking at some type of equation here. Now, 100% of these type of equations can be solved in this way. So I'm going to reveal a way that hopefully you already know or should know that you can solve 100% of these type of equations. So let's just get to it. What type of equations are we dealing with? Well, uh, hopefully you already have uh, determined or know that what we're talking about here is quadratic equations. So when it comes to algebra, and you see this little symbol, an equal sign, you're dealing with an equation. But how we solve this equation is going to, um, you know, be based upon what type of equation this is. Okay, there's different type of equations in algebra. But if you're dealing with a quadratic equation, you have uh, a few different options you could take. Okay, actually like three or four different techniques you could possibly take. But the one I'm going to talk about here will solve 100% of any quadratic equation. We're going to talk about... Uh, one, why it's important to know that. You absolutely need to, uh, to know this uh, technique this way. However, um, we're also going to talk about you never in mathematics want to be stuck with just knowing one way to solve anything. Okay, or I'm going to kind of highlight uh, this uh, concept or this point uh, using this uh, example okay, of solving quadratic equations. Now, if you think you can solve this quadratic equation, and you want to kind of guess what is the way that can solve 100% of quadratic equations, well, I would certainly encourage you to do so. That turns turn this into a cool little pop quiz. But I'm going to get to uh, all of that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and uh, now finally pre-calculus. Um, I also have many, many um, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, um, ASVAB, um, Accuplacer, Alex exam, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, and many, many other type of exams I can help you prepare. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, uh, let me know, drop me a line, and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system, and then obviously help those of you that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to learn math or improve, then you got to be serious about your note taking. All right. So I've been teaching math for decades. And one thing is apparent to me. The one thing that I can point to with consistency over those decades is that those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who, uh, you know, like they'll take notes, like great notes, uh, maybe on Monday, then on Tuesday, uh, they're doing their homework in their other class, and then on Wednesday, their best friend is back in class, so they're talking to them, and then on uh, Thursday, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, i got to catch up on this project in another class. Listen, this isn't going to happen, all right? This is inconsistent note-taking, so even if you take notes sporadically and they're very good, that's not going to be good enough, okay? You have to take notes all the time. There's just too much information coming at you in mathematics. You can't be partially focused and expect to be 100% prepared for, uh, you know, your tests and quizzes, right? So just believe me when I tell you to be successful in math, take a look at your notes, okay? If your notes are super strong, then you're on the right track. But most likely, uh, most of you can um, stand uh, room for improvement. Now, you could use my notes as you improve your notes to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, now let's turn this into a little interesting pop quiz. One, what is the way that you can solve uh, all quadratic equation problems? And two, can you solve this uh, uh, equation, this quadratic equation? So I'm going to get into this right now. So if you don't want to see the solution, go ahead and pause the video. But let's go ahead and reveal the technique that can solve 100% of quadratic equation problems. That is this guy. What is this? What are we looking at? This is called the quadratic formula, all right? The quadratic formula, you absolutely, absolutely need to know it, okay? You need to know how to work with it, and you need to know uh, why we uh, need to use it, okay? So when we're talking about, let me scoot this guy over here. Let's just kind of make this point right now. So when you're dealing with a quadratic equation, 
okay? So like the type that we're dealing with right now, you don't always go to the quadratic formula. There's different possible options. Sometimes you can take the square root of both sides. That's great when you can. Uh, sometimes you want to factor, and if you can't factor, you definitely want to factor. And then if you can't do that, then we're going to be looking at using the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula can uh, solve 100% of problems all the time. Now, there's something called completing the square, which is kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula, and you still are um, going to be tested on this. You still need to understand completing the square. It's important for uh, not only quadratic um, uh, equations, but for other reasons. So you've got to learn this anyways. But in terms of practical uh, uses, okay, when we're dealing with quadratic equations, these are kind of like we have three main options. Now, what happens with a lot of math students, they'll, they'll get good at one type of way of solving something. I'm like, oh, I'm super good at using the quadratic formula. So when I see a problem, I'm going to do this all the time, 100% of the time. And that is not smart, okay? Because we always want to be looking to work smarter, not harder. And you can make uh, a lot more work for yourself, unnecessary work for yourself when you solve a quadratic equation uh, using a quadratic formula when you could have solved it using other techniques. Okay, so uh, if you need help uh, with the quadratic formula, okay, I'm going to give you a recommendation. One, I have uh, a lot of other videos on quadratic equations, quadratic formula in my algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Of course, I teach this stuff thoroughly in my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 courses and uh, beyond, depending on what level of math you're in. But um, So I'm not going to really uh, thoroughly explain the quadratic formula in this particular example. Of course, we're going to use it here in just one second. But uh, anyways, let's just take a look at this. Here is the quadratic formula, this guy right here. You can see it involves these uh, variables A, okay, B, and C. So these come from the coefficients of a quadratic equation when it's written in standard form. In other words, highest to lowest power, and we set that thing equal to zero, the numbers in front of the x squared is a, the number in front of the x is b, and then the number by itself over here is c. Now, of course, these variables could be y, they could be t, they could be z, okay? But uh, anyways, so hopefully you understand that. And now once we have our a, b, and c values, we plug them in, uh, into the respective positions in the quadratic formula, and then we simplify using our strong knowledge of the order of operations, and then we get our solutions, okay? So a lot of pitfalls here, by the way, through my years of teaching math. A lot of students will plug in things correctly, but then they'll kind of mess up in simplifying uh, the quadratic uh, formula. They're kind of, they're, they're set up here. So again, you know, um, I don't want to go off on too many tangents. I want to kind of keep the point simple here. So let's let's get into this problem. So here we have 2x squared plus x equals 0. Now, the way to solve this problem is to use factoring. It's not to use the quadratic formula. So if I was to uh, use factoring as you should, okay, and hopefully you did, I could factor out an x. So x times 2x plus 1, okay, is what this is equal to, and that's going to be equal to 0. So now I have this thing x times 2x plus 1, the answer is 0. So if I said, hey, you have two things, you multiply them together, the answer is equal to 0. Well, what does that tell you about this and this? Well, the only way you can get 0 as an answer if you multiply two things together is this number or this or this number or both of these numbers has to be 0. So this is uh, what we call the zero product property. So what we're going to do is set each one of these factors equal to 0. So x we're going to set equal to 0. So this is one solution right here. Now I should have made this point here uh, at the beginning is that quadratic equations will always, always have two solutions. Okay, Two solutions. They could be a real or imaginary but you're always going to have two answers. Okay, so let's, uh, we already found one, x is equal to zero. So then we're going to set this other factor, 2x plus 1, equal to zero and solve for x. So I got 2x is equal to negative 1, or x is equal to negative 1 half. So that was easy, 1, 2, 3. And if you got this right, then I must give you your nice little happy face with an A plus, and uh, we'll give you two stars, as in this wasn't the hardest problem. Okay, if you're, you know, in algebra, studying quadratic equations, this should hopefully, you know, you've been like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. One, two, three, right? So this takes all of about 45 seconds to do correctly, okay? However, 
Let's take a look at the same problem, but using the quadratic equation. So uh, the quadratic formula, excuse me. So here again is our quadratic formula. So let's say I was just looking at this. I'm thinking, all right, I want to use the quadratic formula because I'm really good at the quadratic formula. So the first thing is I'm thinking I got to get my A, B, C values. So what is A? Well, I'm looking at this. I have 2x, 2x squared plus x equals 0. So you might be saying, well, I know that 2 has got to be my A. And you would be correct. What's B? Well, 1. Okay, there's a 1 in front of this x. So B is equal to 1. But some of you might be saying, well, there's no C here. Well, really there is. This is just plus 0. When you don't see a number here, just it's a 0. Okay, so plus 0 is still the th same thing as 2x squared plus x plus 0. Okay, that's our C. So C is equal to 0. Okay, so I have my A, B, C values. Now I can plug everything in to uh, the quadratic formula and solve. Now, again, this isn't the way you would want to do this, but if you weren't thinking ahead, you're like, I'm just going to do this using the quadratic formula. Let's, let's take a look at the work involved. Okay, so here I got my A, B, C values, and now I'm going to go ahead and plug them in to the wonderful quadratic formula. All right, so let's take a look at this. Here's B, negative B. So this is B is equal to 1. So I'm going to set this up. That's going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of B squared. So that's 1 squared minus 4 times A. A is 2 times C is 0. Okay. So that's all over 2 times A, which is, of course, going to be 2 times 2. So anytime you're working with a quadratic formula, you want to double, triple check that you plugged in the values correctly at this point. Don't do anything uh, don't start simplifying this until you double, triple check that you plugged everything incorrectly. At that point, you want to continue. All right, so here we have negative uh, or uh, the opposite of uh, 1 or negative 1, so that's negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared. Now look at this. I have 4 times 2 times 0, so this is all going to be 0. This whole thing is going to go away. So it's going to be the square root of 1 squared, which is, of course, 1 squared is 1. So that's how this ends up right there over 2 times 2 is 4. All right, so you could, some teachers would be perfect, well, you, you know, you want to simplify this square root of uh, 1 right here. So let's do that. So some teachers will be okay with you leaving your answers at negative 1 plus or minus 1, the square root of 1 is 1, but we have this plus or minus there. When you're finding the roots, you need that plus or minus when you're taking the square root of a positive um, real number. Okay, that's why there's that plus or minus there, because there's two solutions. You'll see this here in a second, over 4. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify this further so we can see the actual answers. All right, so x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 1 over 4. So what does that mean? Well, here, this plus or minus, you want to write, you're going to use uh, one version. You're going to use the addition sign only. We're going to have negative 1 plus 1 for one version. What That's going to give us 1 solution, and then we're going to have negative 1 minus 1, okay? Uh, that's going to give us our other root here. So <clears throat> let's do this now. So we have our first answer, negative 1 plus 1, of course, is 0. 0 over 4 is 0. Hmm, interesting. Isn't that what we got? And what we're, <laughs> we did, uh, we solved this using factoring? Of course, right? So we have negative 1 minus 1, that's negative 2 over 4, and that's negative 1 half. So we got our solutions, 0 and negative 1 half, but let's take a look at the work. Let's, let's just double check. Is that what we got last time? 0 and negative 1 half. <clears throat> yeah, all right, let's go up here. Yep, there you go, right? So we got 0 and negative 1 half, but look at the work involved here. This was all, uh, all the work I needed to take. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need a drink of water. All right, um, so this is all the work I needed to take right here to get the answer. Now, that's super easy, and, you know, you should be having a, you know, happy face with this. You're like, wow, not only did you get the right answer, you know, I only took a couple of quick steps to get it. But if you went off this path, I mean, take a look at the work involved and all the opportunities to make mistakes here. All right, that's a lot more. So the, mo the main point of uh, the video is this. The quad when we're dealing with quadratic equations, you must be an expert at the quad, at the quadratic formula. You got to know how to how to uh, solve problems using quadratic formula. However, you don't want to impulsively 
uh, go right to the quadratic formula. You still need to know these other techniques, like how to factor, um, look for opportunities to take the square root of both the sides of the equation, etc. Of course, you're going to need another completing the square as well. But the main idea is this. Um, sometimes students, when they get good at one thing, they're like, okay, I know that I can solve all problems. I'm really good at this, so I'm, I'm not going to really bother to, to you know, study this or practice this. I'm just going to stick with the, what, I'm, what I know. Guess what? You're going to oftentimes uh, uh, do a problem in a much harder way. And two, your teacher, even though you might uh, get the problem right, they're going to say something to you. They may not take points off, but... You, you, you need to know everything that you're being taught. Let's just say that, okay? And this is the this same uh, uh, approach or this same kind of concept comes up in other topics in algebra, like solving systems. Because when we're solving systems, you can use the substitution method or the elimination linear combination method. There's even other methods as well. And sometimes students just stick with one method, uh, whereas if they use the other method, it would save them a lot of time, okay? So know all the different methods when it comes to solving uh, various type of equations, of course, you know, we're only talking about quadratic equations here, but there's other, you know, uh, in algebra, there's other topics that, you know, uh, again, you could solve um, problems using different, you have different options. You need to know those options. And the only way to know those options it really is to um, be paying attention, taking notes, practicing all your various techniques, and having a broad skill set, okay, a broad toolbox. You know, just like a... Um, you know, it's like a screwdriver, right? Like here's a screw and you want to take it off. You're like, okay, yeah, I could use this guy, you know, this type of screwdriver, you know, a Phillips screwdriver to undo the screw. But if I had this technique or this like a common screwdriver, I could probably get away with doing that. And maybe if I even had some other, like a butter knife or something, I could still even get in here and, and do this. So there's different ways to solve things, right? To, to approach things. But what we want to have is the best tools in our toolbox and when it comes to math and algebra you know you don't want to just have one tool it's not going to be enough for you all right so if this video was some way kind of helpful uh please consider smashing that like button that it definitely helps me out and if you're new to my youtube channel please consider uh subscribing to bet on youtube for 10 plus years have over a thousand videos basic to advanced math uh, my goal is to try to teach this stuff in a clear and understandable way. But I'm coming at it as a teacher, trying to give you my best advice so you can be successful in math. And I'm just teaching you a little, like how to solve a problem, really uh, stressing to you uh, the you know habits, um, the approach to math that you really want to take in order to be uh, really, really successful, to avoid the pain of frustration, etc. So if you listen to my advice, you're going to generally, I think it's going to be pretty beneficial to you. Okay. Now, of course, um, in terms of additional math help with quadratic equations and whatnot, I have a ton of stuff on my channels, um, on my uh, YouTube channel, in my algebra playlist on quadratic equations. So please take advantage of those videos. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.